Hello everyone, thanks for joining and welcome to the eighth session of the Unscript Bootcamp. And this session will be focused on a specific use case. We will be starting slow with just a very simple use case and Tim will be driving it. Um, and I have to thank Tim for coming up with this great idea. So one of us will have an opportunity to do hands-on on a demo org and the rest of us can follow. So even if you do not have access to the org or if you cannot do hands-on on your instance, this is a way where this is this will be very slow paced that you can follow easily. And thanks once again, Tim and uh, Shonika uh, will be the spotlight today driving the demo. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Tim. Please go ahead. Thank you, JB, and and thanks, Shonika, for joining. Um, so in preparation for this meeting, uh, Shonika signed up on our website, reached out in the channel. We've got her marketing cloud access to our sandbox org. And like JB said, we're going to be building out solutions today. I think, Shanika, you have uh, experience in marketing cloud engagement, um, but not correct. on the marketing cloud, traditional marketing cloud side as well. Yes, so, correct. Perfect. Yeah. So we're looking for people, you know, who are just looking to explore the, the platform in this uh, okay. environment. Each time we'll have a, a new builder and a new instructor um, as well. So again, it's an open forum. We're just going to build so any suggestions, just throw them out there. We're just gonna have some fun. So let me just give a quick overview of what um, we're gonna be doing today. So we've got a couple of different scenarios. We're gonna be building out a basic email and then a, uh, and a variation of an abandoned cart email. We did have plans for an, a customized re sales rep signature, but we might move that to the next session. Um, so those who've signed up and um, couldn't make the couldn't be Shanika for this session will have you be um, the builder for future sessions. So definitely okay. look out for those. Okay. And um, okay. so today, one more session, thing I wanted to just the, the, sorry. Sure. Yeah. Sorry, one no, more thing perfect. I wanted to do the pronunciation. It's Shanika. Um, Sorry. Pronunciation. No, that's okay. It happens so much more than you know. I use the Slack pronunciation function a lot. <laughs> thank you, Shanika. I'm so yeah. sorry about that. No that, problem thank at you. all. Thank you. thank you for bringing that up. Um, okay, so here, what we're going to do is quickly go over uh, the two use cases that we're going to be building out with Shanika. Uh, we're going to be building out a welcome email and an abandoned cart email. And then once we, before we dive into that build out, we're just going to give a quick overview of the marketing cloud setup that we've got there. And we're going to talk about the email design system slightly that we're going to be building. Uh, Shanika is going to be building out in the system. And then the data, as we've seen in some of these other AmpScript uh, build outs, the data are, are uh, sitting in a couple of different data extensions that gives us the use case. And then we'll be diving right into the build. So let's talk about um, the use cases. So this is similar to our build out in session week number two, where we've got Northern Trail Outfitters and they've got this welcome email that their email design team has created. Um, but there really isn't any personalization here. So what we wanna do is we're gonna have Shanika create a greeting uh, to render the first name of the customer. And then we're gonna do a lookup because in our data set, we don't have the greeting for all of our uh, subscribers. So we're gonna use the lookup function to look up into another data extension to populate those fields and do some uh, formatting of those as well. Um, so in going over this, we're gonna be doing three steps. We're gonna be personalizing the greeting by pulling in that value from the data extension. We're gonna be doing a lookup using the lookup and the empty function. And then we're gonna be using the substring function index of and subtract, subtract to um, isolate out the first name of the person in that data extension. So three different areas, we're gonna go through that at a very uh, stepped pace on that. And then our second um, use case, we're gonna use this, the welcome email, but we're gonna transform it into a promotional or an abandoned cart email. And for this use case, we've got the marketing teams, they wanna send out a promotional email and again, they have a basic template, but they want to personalize it. So we want to do a couple of different scenarios. We want to customize image and text based on the product interest of that subscriber. We want to customize the promotional products depending on their area of interest. And then if that customer has an abandoned cart, we want to feature that carded item in the uh, email as well. So the steps that we're going to be walking through on that, we're going to be using some out of the box functionality using a dynamic content block. 
we're going to be doing an if then statement to do some personalized text. And then for the product grid, we're going to be using the lookup rows function to pull up a variety of different data points based on each of the products that we want to feature. And then for the abandoned cart solution, we're going to use an if statement to sub in the abandoned cart email itself. So those are our use cases and we'll dive into the platform. So I'm going to stop sharing and Shanika, we're going to have you share your screen and we're going to start from there. All right. Let me just, uh, so you just want me to pull out my dev org, right? That's, yes, please. Okay. My eight-year-old son was on my computer yesterday. So hold on while I move a bunch of Minecraft stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me know when you can see. Don't think I did it right. Hold on. No, not yet, right? Not yet. Hold on, I'm hitting like the security function. Hold up. How do I enable the click the lock to make changes? I'm on my personal computer, so this is so sorry. No problem. Sorry about that. Yeah, we should have okay. we should have these instructions um, in advance of how to how to share. That's okay. Um, I just had to like install the new software. So hopefully. No. Are you on no. Mac, Shanika? Yes. Let's see if it works now. Let's see if it keeps telling me to open my system preferences. Hold on. I may have to jump on a different computer, on my work computer. Can I try that and drop and join from the other computer? Yes, absolutely, okay. yes. Thank you. Right I'll, I'm yeah, gonna no, give, problem. no problem. Okay. Well, um, while Shanika is doing that, let's just, we're gonna do a quick overview of uh, the marketing cloud environment that we're gonna be working with uh, today. So we've set up um, the welcome email that we've got built in here. Um, and let me just go into the data extension so we can take a look at the, um, the data extensions that we've set up to drive this, uh, this logic that we'll be walking Shanika through as well. So um, the first data extension that we have is our email send data extension, which is what we're gonna be using to mimic what we'd use if we were gonna send the email itself. So we've got some personalization uh, points here. We've obviously got the subscriber key and the email address, what's needed to be emailed. And then we've got the personalization field that we're gonna to use to use for the greeting. We've got this line field, which is uh, we're gonna use designating the interest level of the product lines in uh, Northern Trail Outfitters for each of our subscribers. And um, we've got an abandoned cart field to indicate whether they've abandoned a cart or not. And then we've got the abandoned cart SKU as well, which we're gonna be using in our solution. So that's, that's what we've got for our basic send date extension. We'll be using this for the signature uh, name field for the first part for the welcome email. And then we also have a universal file date extension set up as well. This is a sort of a, what, what they would call like a universal date extension, which would be a, a expanded list of all your subscribers and all of their information. Um, that would be used on the back end to have all of that data in one uh, store based on the subscriber key. So we're going to be using this data extension to do a lookup uh, to pull in the full name as a backup for the name field on the welcome email. When it's not present, we're going to be looking up the name. And as you can see, this full name has first and last name in it. Uh, so we're going to be using the substring function to, um, um, to separate that out. Um, so those are the two data extensions that we're going to be using uh, to drive our solution 
on the on the on for the, our first use case, and then for our second use case, we've got um, a product feed, which is a listing. Uh, it's a small listing, but it's a listing of all the products that uh, we're going to be using for this use case that we're going to be rendering in our abandoned cart promotional email. So we've got the SKU number here, which is going to designate you know, how to look up this data extension for the sp specific SKU. And then it's got um, information that we're going to be rendering in the email itself. So it's got the name of the product. It's got the image so we can render the how it looks. And it's got the link to the website for that specific image. Those all four of these items, these three items are going to be doing a lookup to pull in those values so that we can render that in the email. So this is another data extension we're going to be using uh, for data for the abandoned cart uh, email. So check back in. Shanika, were you able to join again on your work computer? She might yes, I'm here. In. I'm trying to, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm logging in. All right, okay, let's fantastic. see if we can, if we can share now. Uh, hopefully there are no issues. Let me know if you can see. Excellent. Okay, All right. this is what comes up. It's forbidden, okay? Okay, so let me change that. Something's not working on your... So if you go to the blue cloud on the upper left-hand corner, yeah. There we go. All right. So yep, there you go. All right. So we'll okay. let's let's start in the, in the marketing cloud environment. So we're going to go into the email studio on the upper left-hand corner. And what we're going to do is we're going to select, and if you select email there, we're going to select the, we've got a, a welcome email set up for you. Um, so that we can, um, yep, we can click right into that email. Oh, so this is actually an actual send, sorry. So in the, okay. um, yep, uh, up on the very top where it says content, um, yep, so we're going to click in there. So this goes into the content builder section of the email studio. Uh, this okay. is where you're going to be listing all of your email content. It shows just a general folder of how the content gets created. You can see that modified data over there on the right. Um, but we're going to go into a specific folder that we've put in for this uh, for this email. So you can see in there on the left where it says content builder and marketing. Yep. So yeah. if you click on that little arrow just to the left of marketing, that should open up that window. And then we're going to open that again. And then we're going to go open that one more time. So we've created an email design system within, uh, within this platform, and it's got a variety of different uh, components that we're going to be using today. We've got a folder for emails. We've got folders for images that we're going to be featuring. We've got folders for a module, which are the different content blocks that we're going to use to create, uh, modify our email. And then you can have the template of your email in a folder itself. And then scripts can be some custom AMP script logic to drive some of the which we might use in a future session we probably won't use today okay did i lose you so if you click that emails folder you should be able to find um, our welcome email in that folder this one yeah and okay. then we're going to click into Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. I think the connection is bad. Your voice is breaking up, Tim. Oh, sorry about that. It might just be the yeah, perfect. Okay. Excellent. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit this email. So in, in the upper right-hand corner, um, there's a little edit button right next to that send button. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna click edit there. And then we're gonna edit content. Edit or content. Edit... Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So here's here's our basic email. Um, so this is a welcome email from Northern Trail Outfitters. And you can see sort of as we described in the use case, the uh, personalization is pretty generic, right? So we're dear loyalty member. Um, so that's what we're going to want to work on today is creating um, a, a way to personalize it based on the actual email that we're going to be sending. 
So what, what we could do here is if you go to your browser tab and duplicate that tab, we're gonna to go to another section of Marketing Cloud and we're gonna show um, a data extension. So if you, if you right click on your email uh, tab, the email Marketing Cloud tab. This one? Um, so on the browser tab where it says email dash Marketing Cloud. Um, this one, okay. So, so in, um, in your Google, yes, that one, yeah. So we want to duplicate, yeah, that that tab. So you'll have two marketing cloud tab, tabs open. Which it should have done, but it does a duplicate. Okay. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, so now in this tab, we're going to go to an area in Marketing Cloud. Same, we're going to go into Email Studio. We're going to go to these data extensions. And this is the data that's going to be driving our sends. So in that top navigation, right to the right of where it says Overview Content Subscribers, we're going to mm -hmm. click on Subscribers. Um, yep. And then if you scroll down, you see it says Data Extensions. Uh, it's about five. Yep. So we're going to click on that data. It's a little further up. It just says data oh, extensions it. just by itself. Yeah, perfect. And then in that, see that folder on the left, it says data extensions. If you can open, there's a plus sign. So if you hit that plus sign, it should open up that folder a little bit. And then if you click on that one more time, and then if you click on that AMP script bootcamp folder, And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click into this email underscore send data extension. So a data extension is used whenever you're looking to send an email, it contains the basic components that the email is gonna to use to, you know, to send. Um, so here we've got a variety of different fields. We've got a subscriber key, email address name. And if you, on the, top where it says properties. If you click on that records tab, just to the right of properties in the middle, yep. It helps to sort of see the data. So the, the, the primary yeah. thing that you need whenever you're sending an email is a subscriber key, which is that unique ID um, that it tells Marketing Cloud, who is the subscriber? And okay. then second to that is an email address, which is the email address this is going to. So those are the primary fields that you need. For our use case, we're going to also include here, we've got this name field, which has the name of the person that we're going to use to personalize. And then there's a couple other fields we've got here. We've got this line field, which is going to tell for each of the subscribers if are they interested in, a, in outdoor products or apparel. And then a little bit further on the right, we've got this abandoned cart field, which tells you did they abandon their cart, and then also has the abandoned cart SKU in there as well. So what we're going to do is um, go back to the email tab and we're going to preview the email against this data extension so that we know, um, you know, what would render if we did an actual email send itself. So if you, if you click on that tab and then see on the upper left hand corner, you're in that content section. We're going to want to do is we want to hit the preview and test. Um, yep, yeah, right there. And then there's a little blue folder on the right in that little panel that uh, under that subscriber, pre yep. So we're gonna click on that. And then we're gonna select the date extension that we were just looking at. So over, yep, so in that date extension, we're gonna hit that little carrot. And then we're gonna go into that hands-on folder. So for that one more carrot right to the left of hands-on, we're gonna go into AMP Script Bootcamp. Yep, and then we're going to click on email send. Okay. <clears throat> yep, and then you can select any one of these rows of subscribers over there on the right. So if you click on it, it should highlight that row. Yep, and then at the bottom right, we're going to hit select. So what this is going to do is going to say, for this email, I want to see how this would populate if we were sending it to John, right? And so you can see nothing changed because we don't have any personalization in this email. But I wanted to go through this step because this is where we're going to use the variables from this data extension to change loyalty member that's in that dear um, signature. Mm -hmm. We want to change that to dear John or any of those scenarios. So okay. that's where we're going to utilize um, 
the, the data extension value under name uh, to do that. So to, to start that process, what we're gonna do is if you can go up over there on the left where you see that name field that's populated, um, we're going to copy that name, just the name itself, N-A-M-E, that field. Um, but the actual, yeah, perfect. And we'll copy that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to paste that in a section of the email where we create, which is called a, a header code section. So if you go um, back into that content tab, we're going to go back and we're going to edit the email itself. Yeah. And then right underneath the Northern Trail Outfitters um, header, there should be a little tab section that, um, so if you scroll out, um, so if you scroll, you use your mouse and then, yeah, go back to the top, right, right, right under the logo, there should be something that'll appear um, right below that. Um, so if you, yeah, right snippet. there, if you click into that. Okay. Yep, that is a code yep. snippet. This is where we're gonna be doing all of our coding work, uh, okay. our Inscript yeah. work, yep. So what you can do is you can see that little border, you can widen that a little bit so it gives you a little bit more of a window. Yep, and if you just pull that over to the right. Perfect, okay. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use, and uh, we're gonna set that, that variable, which you just copied name um, as a variable so that we can populate it in that field. So I've got laid out in this um, email a bunch of different sections that we're going to be using for coding, step one through one through three for our first use case. So if you can go on line four at the end of line four, we're going to hit return a bunch of times so we can create some space between step one and step three. So if you, if you go to the end of that, just hit return a couple of times. Perfect. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paste in that name value that you had copied, and you can just paste it anywhere between lines five and nine, um, just to paste it. Perfect. So we know that that is the, the field and the date extension that includes John. So what we want to do is we want to create a variable that is set to that uh, date extension value. So what we're going to do is before the name field, if you can put your cursor right before it, so we're going to do a function called set, which is, uh, you know, capital S-E-T. Yeah, and then we're going to hit space. And then this is where we're going to uh, create a variable that is going to use, be used to render the name. So we're going to start, any variable has to start with an at symbol. So if you start with a, an at. Yeah. And then let's call this uh, first name, and that could be all one word. Perfect. And then, um, yep. And then, and then we're going to hit a space, and then we're going to hit an equal sign, and then hit space again. And then let's paste in the name again, that, that field. So if you hit through control V, I think you've already got that copied. Yeah. Yep, perfect. So this is how we wanna set this first name variable equal to name. Um, but to do that, we have to do a little bit of work within AMP script so that we do it in the right syntax. So if you go right before name again, um, the beginning of that, of that, yep, right there. So we're gonna type the word attribute. and then value all in one word. Yeah, and then we're gonna do an open paren. And then we're gonna do a double quote. And we're gonna just do one double quote, sorry. Yep, and then we're gonna do a double quote right after at the end of name. Yep, and then a and then a close paren. Perfect. All right, so you've set your first variable in uh, in Marketing Cloud in AMP Script. Um, so to do a little bit of you know best practices, if um, on line at the end of line four, if you could create a couple of spaces, you're hitting return a couple more times, right above line five. Um, Here. So. The, 
the the line um, see on the left where it's all those all those lines are numbered one two three yeah. four <laughs> five yeah so if you go at the end of line four um oh end so, of line four yeah. okay yep and then hit return a couple of times okay, okay. perfect and then I was looking at step four I apologize yeah no I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> And now, if you type the word var, V A R, okay, in the space. And then you're going to copy your at first name variable from line 10. The whole thing or just at first name? Just at first name. Perfect. And then you're going to paste that after that var. Okay, excellent. So, what that does is that, that, it you know establishes that you're going to be using this variable you're declaring it and then now you're setting it and you're setting it to the value that's coming through on that date extension of name uh, according to this date extension so that's excellent nice work in the upper right hand corner there's a blue save button so let's make sure that we save your work because it was nicely done i had a great teacher <laughs> <laughs> nice work all right, and so now what we're gonna to wanna to do is we wanna output this variable in the HTML itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go, to go back into that header script block, uh, that code snippet. So if you go into the main email body itself, um, okay. so if you scroll like right above, right below the Northern Trail, yep. And I think if you scroll, there it is, click on that code snippet, perfect. And now we're gonna copy that at first name variable again. It doesn't matter either one. Either one works. Okay. Perfect. And now we're going to go into the email itself. So into that block where it says dear loyalty member, we're going to click into that. Yep. We're going to click right into that block. So as you noticed, each this email is broken up into a bunch of different blocks. The mm -hmm. the one that you're doing your AMP script code is, is a code snippet block. You can see on this one, in, it says free form. These are all different blocks that are available in Marketing Cloud. And it's all part of this email design system that you can set up, that you can allow it for, I want this block to just do code. I want this, this one to output each HTML. So it's just sort of a difference there. Okay, so what we're gonna do, you can you can work right in this tool, which is the, um, the you know, the sort of the, the WYSIWYG tool. But we're gonna okay. go a little bit, we're gonna challenge you a little bit. We're gonna see if we can just do it working right in the HTML itself. So yep, yeah, we're gonna click on that HTML editor. Okay. And so what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to paste over that variable that you copied over loyalty member. So you can just highlight loyalty member and you can paste in your variable. Perfect. Now to output this variable, we need to, just like we did with the name and the code snippet block, we need to modify it so it works in AMP script. So right at the beginning of that at first name variable, we're gonna want to uh, type in a couple of things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a percent percent. And this is how you open up a, a inline example in AMP script. And we're gonna do an equals. And then we're gonna do a lowercase v. And then we're gonna do an open paren. And then at the end of first name, we're gonna do a close paren. And then we're gonna do an equals. And then we're gonna do a percent percent. Okay, so what this does is that whenever you're doing inline AMP script, you have to open it up with this percent percent. You can sort of see it opens up with percent mm -hmm. percent and it end, ends with a percent percent. When you want to have a function be populated in line, you have to use the equals. So that sort of sets up the equals at the beginning and the end. And then the function that we're using for this is the V function, which you could sort of use as like control V. It's basically saying, I want to output the variable, which is this first name, which you set up in that previous code snippet. So that looks really good. Um, so let's go up and save this. And then we're going to preview it and see if we can get John to populate now instead of loyalty member. Bingo. There you go. You've got John populated. You're taking a single value from a date extension and you're now incorporating it in the email itself, personalizing it. Nice job. Yeah. Cool. 
And then it, in that same, right next to that blue um, folder, you can see there's a little arrow just to the left of that blue folder. Yep, if you click on that, it's what it's gonna do, it's gonna cycle through the date extension of all the different records. So you can see this one, this one does not have a name, right? This one has mm -hmm. a, a name, it's Paul, but it's all caps. This one does not. So the data is sort of mixed, right? The data is, is mm -hmm. not really, this one's all lowercase. So this is what yeah. we wanna fix um, in, in our welcome email. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to fix is that what are we gonna do about these, these um, we wanna keep this personalized. So what are we gonna do about these, these uh, records that don't have a name? So we have, luckily we have another data extension that we can use to look up an alternate name for that person when one isn't present. So I wanna give you a tour of that data extension because we're gonna to wanna to access this data extension in our code. So if you go to your second tab that you had looked at that data extension in the, yep. And then in the very top, you see where it says, the, it says Amscript Bootcamp in blue. Um, see it says data extensions, hands-on. Yep, if you click on that Amscript, that's gonna take you right back to that folder, which is a kind of handy little navigation tool. So okay. we're gonna to wanna to click into this universal file data extension. It's a different data extension than email send data extension. So this is a typical use case in marketing cloud where you've got this data extension that has every detail about every one of your subscribers, sort of this universal file. So if you click into the records tab, what we're gonna do is it's gonna give us an insight to some of the records that we might have available in this data extension. So in that same tab, just to the right of the properties, you can click into that records tab, yep. And we'll take a, a tour of what this data extension has. It's got a lot more information than the email send, right? So the good thing that this data extension has, it has a subscriber key. So this is how we can match the records from our mm -hmm. email send to this data extension. We can match them up. And then if we match them up, we can access any of these fields that are associated with that subscriber. So that's what we're gonna be doing, but I wanted to walk through this visually of how we would do that. So um, if you can scroll over to the right a little bit, I don't know if it's there in the UI, yep. So this, there's a bunch of fields here available. We've got gender, we've got line, we've got source of where they came from. But what we're looking at is that full name field. So we can see that that field is populated for every subscriber. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to say, okay, if when we're doing um, our email send, if that name field that we just saw wasn't populated, if it's empty, what we want to yeah. do is we want to look up this date extension and then pull in this full name field so that we'll have something to personalize. Does that make sense, Shanika? Yep, it does. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Totally fine. So we'll, Yep. And so what we're going to want to do is we want to copy that full name field syntax. So if you go back to the properties tab, it's a little bit easier to do it from there. It's kind of like, yeah. it's not meant to copy for some reason. Yeah. And if you scroll down, you can find that full name field down there. Uh, in oh, the right. Yeah. So if we want to copy that, yep. And then we're going to go back to our email. And we're gonna go into that code snippet section at the top. So we're gonna edit, we're gonna go back to that content. Yep, the content tab. Yep, and we're gonna go into that code snippet section. Yep, perfect. And now we're in section two. This is the section that we're gonna be doing, or step two, that we're gonna doing the lookup to find that alternate name. So perfect, we're gonna create some spaces. And then you can paste in that value wherever you want in there. Perfect. And now we want to grab one more item, well, a couple more items from this date extension. Um, so if we go back to the date extension, what we want to do is we want to copy the name of this date extension, because it's this is we're going to create a function that looks for the specific uh, name of it. So you can copy that universal underscore file. Where is that? Um, so that's right at the upper oh, yes. left hand. Yep. You want to okay. copy that perfect, that whole name. Okay. Excellent. And, and then, then go back. We're going to go back. Yep, we can go back into the data extension or the code snippet block. And we're going to paste that anywhere. Perfect. Okay. 
And then um, I'm gonna drop into the chat. What we're gonna do is look up in, um, in Salesforce documentation, the function guide that gives us the syntax for all of our um, functions. So let me just copy this and let me drop this in the chat. So open this, right? Yeah. Perfect. Yep. Excellent. And so what we're going to be using for uh, this function, it's in the. Um, let's see if we scroll down a little bit. We're going to be we're going to be looking for the uh, lookup function, and that is in. It is in the data extension functions. Okay. So you're almost there. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. So look up, just look up by itself. We're going to click into there and we'll take a look at what this does. So okay. we want capabilities to look up in a data extension and um, you know find this full name field so that we can populate it uh, as our personalization. So this is how this syntax works. So we're gonna be, um, you know, we'll, we'll copy over this code in a second, but let me give you a sort of a tour of the fields that need to be populated. So the, there's four fields that need to be populated. The first field is the name of the data extension. So we've copied that over. The second field where it is city, this is the, the value that you want returned from that data extension. So in our use case, it's gonna be full name. So those first two ones are easy. The fields number three and fields number four are the fields that we're gonna be look, looking to make the match um, from the value that we're looking for that subscriber key in the source data extension. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to set a value for that subscriber key in our code snippet. That's gonna be field number three. And then, or sorry, that's gonna be field number four. And then we're gonna be looking up for field number three is in the date extension, the field that represents that subscriber key. So we'll walk through that a little bit more in detail, but I just wanted to give you a tour of how this function's working. So you can copy that code, look the right there, we'll use that exact example. And then we're gonna bring that in over to our email itself. Okay, excellent. And then you can paste that anywhere in that section. And okay, excellent. So now you can remove the um, the percent percent at the beginning of that um, at the beginning of that line. Remove it. Yep. And then this is where we're going to start. We're going to do we're going to be setting a variable to this lookup. So you can type set set. Yep. Okay. And then we're going to do a space. And then we're gonna copy the at first name variable from line nine or line 10. We're gonna use that same variable. And then we'll paste that right after the set. Perfect. So we're gonna set this full first name variable. Again, whenever that field is blank, it's gonna do a lookup. So we're gonna be looking up the data extension that we are, you know, that universal file data extension. So if you wanna copy that universal file um, syntax and paste it over the postal code, perfect. Excellent. And then that second field is the field in the data extension that we wanna return. So that's that full name field. So replace city with full name, right? Correct, yep. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Perfect. Now the the third field is the field in the date extension that has the subscriber key. So let's go back to that date extension, and um, we can go into records, and we'll just take a look at that records just to, to verify it. So 
this subscriber key in our example we're using this contact id in salesforce which typically begins with the 003 so that's what we're using as our subscriber key some instances that could be a lead id which is a 00 q sometimes it can be an email address but this is the the subscriber key i think you sort of saw in that other data extension it's the same syntax that we're using between the two so subscriber key is what we're going to use to match our two uh, data extensions to pull that up. So if you go to the properties tab and if you copy that subscriber key syntax, yep. And that's over there under that fields, you can see, yep, we'll copy that. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. So then the last field is we need to create a variable for just like we created for first name, we need to create a variable for our subscriber key so that we can do the lookup. So what we're gonna wanna do, we'll do first is that if you can copy line 10 um, in your code, we're gonna use this as a, a template for setting a variable. So we can copy that, yep. And then you can drop that in you know, after line 17, uh, if you create a little bit of space there. Yep, and then you can paste that in there, perfect. And then let's call this variable, instead of first name, let's call it subscriber key, just because it's, you know, it's the name that we can, um, it's easy to use. Here. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Does it matter if it's all, okay. No, that works, that's, that's fantastic. Now okay. we're gonna go back to your data extension tab because we need to find the syntax in our email send data extension that corresponds to that subscriber key. So if you go up to the top where it says AMP script bootcamp in blue, um, we're gonna navigate to that folder, yeah. And then we're gonna go to that email send data extension. Again, that was the one that we're using for the actual send itself. And let's hit records just so that we can validate the data and see what it looks like. So there, there's that 003 number, the subscriber key. So luckily we named it exactly the same in both, in both environments. So if you go back to the properties tab, we're gonna copy that subscriber key syntax from the data extension. Yep, and then we're perfect. And then we're gonna go back into the email content. And then we're gonna, where it says attribute value on line 19, where it says name, we're going to paste over name with a subscriber key. So again, that was the field in the data extension that we want to set that variable to. Perfect. Nice. Okay, excellent. So now we can use for our fourth variable in our lookup on line 21, we can use the variable at subscriber key as that for that fourth field. So if you want to on line 18 copy the at subscriber key value um here perfect yep yeah. and then you're going to paste that into that fourth field where it's four six zero one six okay perfect and then you can delete that equals percent percent at the end of that um excellent yeah. excellent fantastic cool so what this is doing is it's setting a variable which is gonna be, it's gonna look up that data extension based on that subscriber key, and it's gonna return this variable called full name, um, and that's gonna be set as a variable for first name. So that's that's fantastic. Um, so to what save? we wanna do, sorry, go ahead. Do you want me to save? Yes, thank you, let's save. <laughs> How many times have we all done that and we don't save I know. our changes? <laughs> so true. So true. <laughs> Traumatized by that. <laughs> okay, excellent. So now we're yes. going to go back into the code uh, snippet and we're going to do one more thing, which is we're going to. Um, so you can go to that uh, right below the, yep, into that section. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create, now that we have this logic set up, we're going to create um, some syntax within um, our AMP script, script that's going to check to see if uh, certain th this uh, field is empty. And if it is, we're gonna use this uh, new logic that we created. So what you can do is um, on lines 19 and 20, you can delete those now because those are being used in other, uh, in other spaces, yeah. 
And what we're going to hit, let's just hit return. We're going to break a little, make a little space between that set statement. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do an if statement. So we're going to start off with a capital IF. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're going to do, we're going to use a new function. We're going to call it, so we're going to add a space. And then we're going to use this function called empty, which is empty, but all caps. Okay. And then open paren. And then we're going to copy that at first name variable from wherever you want to copy it. Yeah. And then we're going to paste it in that paren. Perfect. And we're going to do an n paren. Okay. And then we're going to do a space. And then we're going to do a capital then, T H E N. Perfect. And then we've, so what it's going to say is if this first name variable, is empty, uh -huh. then we're gonna do this set statement. We're gonna go look up, we're gonna set the first name to this full name in this other date extension. And so that's what that logic's doing. And then the only thing we need to do on line 22 is type in end if, E-N-D-I-F. Perfect, and let's hit save on that. I don't need anything after then. Nope, it's it's okay. the, that this the 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 after that is that set statement. Yeah. Okay, is, is what, is what got that's it. That's doing, but that's a great question. Yep. Okay, so then let's preview and see um, see what out, outputs. See if this logic works. See if we got any errors. Anything not working? Okay, so here's an example. We've got Kristen. That first name is populating. Now we've got an example where there's either that name field is empty. And mm -hmm. we're pulling in that that full name, Chris Nori. So yeah, keep cycling okay. through. See if you come. there's Amanda. That the first name field is populating, and then if we yeah, if we scroll back, so we can find another example. Patty yeah, Carlson's Patty. coming through. Excellent. So yeah, so that was a, a way to use. We're using a, an email send date extension to populate values. Sometimes you have all your data points when you're doing an email send like this example, when Paul's rendered. Sometimes they're not. And sometimes you need to use functionality like a lookup. Um, yeah. And what we did was create an if statement to see you know, if this value is empty, then, uh, then use this other value. So okay. any okay. questions on that, Shanika? Any, any no. thoughts on that? OK, great. Nope. My only concern is I have to be on a call. We have a team meeting I'm attending virtually at 1 o'clock. No so problem. About I think 10 more minutes. That's perfect. Now, yeah, this is yeah. this is this is fantastic. It's a great place to stop. We've accomplished okay. a lot and you've done you've done some great work. You've been under the under the gun too. So we really appreciate <laughs> all of the effort, your openness, especially switching between Thank computers. You. Yes. Um, so <laughs> how was how was building with Amp Script and Marketing Cloud for you the first time? Does it seem like, well, it was easy? Is it was a nice step by step or any feedback it's that you have to share? It's not that bad. It's really pretty similar, especially if you work in the code and marketing cloud account engagement. And it obviously makes sense if you have at least any experience working through emails. Um, yeah, it wasn't bad at all. Like some of the some of it is a little bit similar. You know, you would use a merge field in Pardot, but you are pulling from a data set. Um, so it's very similar. Awesome. Well, fantastic. Yeah. We yeah. really yeah. appreciate the user, it. Are not... Yeah. I was, I was just going to say the user interface is a little bit different, um, but WYSIWYG works a little bit similar as well. So um, I do like being able to click into the code and, and manipulate things here and having like the sections you could knock, you know, lock down because I could see use cases for that when I'm partnering with like the sales team and they just want to change, you know, signature or something like that. I think would be helpful. Gotcha. So your use your use case is, is full HTML where it's one yeah. it's one document. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that, yeah. Yeah. That's very helpful to have. Like especially if you can build this email design system with all these different blocks working different functions. Mm -hmm. Like like you said, we isolated. We were working in two sections: the code snippet yeah. block for all of our code was count, captured, and then just a, a sliver of of uh, content just for the personalization. We weren't affecting the CTA, any of yeah. that stuff. So yeah, no, that's a really good point. I'm glad you shared that. 
Fantastic. I'd well, love to partner with you guys and do this more if you need help or you need happy to be the guinea pig. This is really awesome. helpful. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Amazing job. Thank you for being Thank our you so much for being patient. builder. And uh, yeah, so we'll next next week or it's not we're off next week, but in the following week, we're just going to continue with this use case okay. and continue to build off of what you've done. Okay. Um, we do have a couple of people lined up, but we'll definitely put you on the list for future sessions. And thank you that so much. Great. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for all the great. feedback. Thank have you. a great day. It was day. a pleasure. Bye. It was thank a pleasure you. having you, Shanika. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you. And Tim, you want to cover everything, anything, or are we done? Um, yeah, let me just share my screen. We'll just talk about. Um, yeah, so so like I said, I think that went really well, and I think we were going to. We'll just continue on this track um to build out the the use cases that we had talked about in the scenario um but we'll be reaching out you know please people uh if, if you want to sign up please continue to sign up and um we'll just be checking in with the new builders each time to say you know we're going to continue in this path unless there's something else they want to work on we'll just keep building out these use cases and uh and and growing from there but uh yeah that was it that's all i want to cover so thanks everybody uh, jb anything that you want to cover and pass it off to you. Oh, I think you covered everything, Tim. Uh, so it was a wonderful session, and thanks for coming up with this initiative. This is the first uh, uh, of its kind that we are doing, and uh, I, I know this is very detailed, and uh, anybody who doesn't have access to the NCORG, they know how to browse, how to navigate, how to you know, go to something else, uh, exploring. It's something which is unique. And as you mentioned, uh, uh, the next session is not, uh, a, there, there's no session next week. Uh, the next two sessions will be on 11th and 18th of July. Uh, if you haven't all, already registered for the next two sessions, please make sure that you register for them as well. And the recordings will be uploaded to the YouTube channel, Trailblazing Together. And any questions, please reach out to me or Tim or on the Slack channel or any other LinkedIn profiles. And thanks everyone for joining and thank you, Tim. Hope to see you again next time. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.